Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at soundcloudstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCloud Studios is the answer. SoundCloud Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundcloudstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Mosin Dia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Dia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Mosin Dia has garnered great reviews and Eve Love and enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Mosin Dia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by a picture of this photo box. Remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meal? The holidays are coming, and what better time to give a gift for remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whether a gift for grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809. That's 646-798-0809. Or visit pictureofthisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture this photo books. Bring your memories back to life. Whimsical, casual, or formal. For you. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on for 30 podcast platforms like Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Don't forget to take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today. And don't forget to check out the Mike Wagner Show merchandise at themikewagnershow.com. Also on Amazon.com under the Mike Wagner Show podcast, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. Makes great Christmas gifts year-round. And don't forget to check out the Me and Most and Zia store at Amazon for great merchandise, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, and more. And great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles as well. Make sure you check those out. And don't forget to donate to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com. Also on Anchor FM slash support and PayPal. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who is uh, a professional adventurer and endurance athlete. And uh, he also is a keynote speaker out of Long Island. And uh, he's um, done 24-hour ice climbing benefit. Um, he's also done the, um, the uphill ski challenge. And he's also done the number one honor and award, which we're going to talk more about. And um, he's basically just um, been on a number of talks. He's uh, been on a number of... Um, been runs, endurance races, and a lot more. This guy's got a great story to tell. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Long Island, professional adventurer, endurance athlete, and keynote speaker, the very multi-talented Andrew Gilman. Andrew, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's great to have you on board, Andrew. So you're a professional adventurer, and you're also an endurance athlete. You're also a keynote speaker of Long Island. You have uh, done the 24-hour ice climbing benefit, also uphill ski challenge, and you also got the number one honor and award. Before we talk about accomplishments, what was that number one honor award that you have done so far? Well, I, I, I can say it probably was becoming the first American to climb ice for 24 hours. Hmm. And... Uh, you know, what we'll be talking about today will be a, a first in history. Hmm. And so that'll be pretty incredible. And, okay. you know, originally being from Long Island and now living and training out of Boulder, Colorado or wherever my training brings me. Uh, it's just such an honor to be able to come back to Long Island and make history. Hmm. That's rather interesting. And uh, tell us how you first got started. I first got started by riding my bike through uh, Port Washington where I grew up and that led into triathlon and then triathlon turned into a career at the elite level where there was major sponsorship, international travel. And I was one of the fastest cyclists in the United States uh, within the, as an American racing those distances, uh, Olympic and half Ironman and being one of the top guys, not to mention being a late bloomer and one of the smallest guys in the field. So it was, it was always very nice to, uh, to have those victories. And, and of course, you know, being on the rowing team as well too, and being the smallest athlete and um, what are some of the challenges that presented and uh, how'd you manage to overcome? Well, I was never on a rowing team. 
Mm, okay. I picked up rowing uh, as an interest. And the, the challenges that I really have are, are nutrition linked. It's never been about motivation or showing up somewhere and saying, well, I don't know if I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, the, sto- the stoke is there. The excitement's there. It's a matter of the logistics and acquiring the equipment and getting the training and getting to the places I need to be. And it's, you know, the, the adventure of getting it all together and then sometimes finding that volunteer team that I don't know exists until 48 hours before the event goes off. And that's just kind of, uh, it, it's heartbreaking to think, well, because you're not popular enough then you're not worth somebody showing up for to do something incredible with. And uh, now it's, it's amazing. The outpouring of support uh, to, circum, to circumnavigate Long Island solo on a coastal rowboat in an Olympic year on the most popular marine craft there is right now. Mm-hmm. That's human power of being a coastal it is massive. And I'm, I'm actually shocked that no one's done this before me. Man, that is something. And of course, you know, I, I can imagine being the Olympics, uh, you know, somehow that's going on in Japan. And um, I, you know, I was going to ask you too, how much of the Olympics uh, have you watched so far? I've watched some of it. I was most interested in the triathlon. Uh, I'm so disconnected from the sport now. Uh, I used to train in the pool with uh, the woman who won, uh, Flora Duffy. And she was, uh, she had a phenomenal race at 155. Uh which is pretty darn quick in those horrific conditions. And of course, watching the coastal race and that's been put off for a day or two. Uh, they're having a typhoon that comes through. Wow. So yeah, the, the waves are going to be great for the surfers, which I believe is the first in history that we've had the Olympic surfing. Oh, uh, long, Olympic oh surfing. yeah. Like sur- yeah. Surfing and skateboarding is brand new. And then coastal rowing is new. Mm-hmm. Coastals are like the more wild cousin of the skull. We could surf the boat. We can go into choppy water. We can go to big water. Uh, sculling is calm, flat, protected. There are no waves on a coastal or sorry, on, on a skull. Because if there is, the, that, that boat's going to sink. It's going to fill. They don't self-bail. And uh, you'll lose a $15,000 carbon fiber shell uh, on the low end of things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's... It's very exciting right now with the Olympics, and unfortunately, there's no spectators. And just uh, you know, it's great that they have it going. You know, it's very hard to keep your attitude together, mm-hmm. and so it's just an added challenge. I, I I was reading something about that with the Olympics as well too. That um, the uh, Tokyo officials are very disappointed with the um, the small crowds, and of course, they're dealing with the coronavirus, the COVID, and um, Delta variants that coming in, and and whatever else, and 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 also there's also backlash. Um, you know, four years ago with the Olympics, uh, basically with the um this a number of scandals, uh, scandals like with doping scandals, and um, yeah. I mean, just everything imaginable is like every scandal possible just literally ruined the Olympics. And it's like right now they have to start the Olympics uh, all over from scratch, practically. Which which is needed. You know, we need to we need to have a clean culture of racing. We need to have, you know, a clean culture of adventuring uh, where people don't misstate what they've done and that they own their truth. You know, my, my biggest one of my biggest ethos is, is that, you know, I don't want to be misrepresented for a professional rower or an expert rower. I'm a brand new rower with the mentality that I can achieve anything with the right training and some support for my own safety. I, I am new at rowing Mm -hmm. and I'm only getting better every day and more proficient. And I, I'm very strong. I, I train my brains out and, uh, you know, this, this isn't a, you know, the adventure is pretty much defined as something that isn't smooth or dreamlike always. Mm-hmm. And we want to try to avoid adventure. So we go in with a great attitude and positive mindset and well-supported and well-trained with the correct gear and, and knowing how to use your gear and you understand your nutrition and you go in there and you give it absolutely everything. You give it absolutely everything. And if you find your limit during that experience, then you're done. If you exceed that limit, you're probably going to get hurt or you're going to get carried off on a stretcher or worse. Mm -hmm. And 
and, and yeah. what's your, and what's your typical day like when it comes to um you, you know getting involved in training triathlons um extreme and everything like that what what is your typical day like in triathlon it was pretty much wake up breakfast get your pool session pool session would be about 3000 meters on the low end and up to about 5,000 typically on the bigger times during the winter. Uh, coaches will run us, you know, we're all training our own schedule, but if you're at a master's workout, which is pretty much any workout, not in college, uh, you know, you're going to do 5,000 meters and I'd always do an extra thousand or 1500 on the end, regardless of how fast or long or whatever we did one and a half K off with every workout, you know, miles make champions. Mm -hmm. From there, it'd be like a bit of, you know, hang out for about an hour and 15, eat, drink, get my bike kit on and go out and ride for about an average of three and a half hours up to six and a half hours, wow. uh, depending on time of year. And short evil sessions would be about two and a half. And that was pretty much just everything I had. Uh, some days were all three and I finish off a, a hard ride with a long steady run of up to two hours and 10 minutes. Wow. And after about a seven hour day of training, I eat everything. Uh, you know, I need a box of cookies. So I do that. <laughs> you know, a pound, I need, I need a pound, you know, I need a pound of roast beef within two sittings and then I'd have dinner. Boy, you're putting this to shame. And of course uh, I saw on your profile as well too, that your number one honor award is eating 14 voodoo donuts a day and plenty of monster drinks. I went, I can only eat two chocolate donuts. <laughs> I, I have eaten 14, 14 donuts in a day. I don't know if uh, I want to repeat that anytime soon, but they were, they're good. They're good. I mean, I'm a monster energy athlete and they're very generous and treat me well. And uh, I only drink half a can at a time. It's just huh? way too much for me to, huh. to drink all of it. Yeah, oh yeah. Interesting. I thought you'd be drinking like, you know, just uh, down them like, you know, like water or coke or anything like that. I went, oh my goodness. Like, I, I think I no, handle maybe no. a few sips of monster. Like, oh, here we go. They're potent. They're potent. And my stomach is, is rather uh, rebellious and will let me know that it's angry faster than I want. And, you know, I'll drink half a monster and I'll have some power bar product and make sure I have enough sugar load and caffeine and complex carbohydrates. And, uh, you know, go into an hour and 15 minute workout with about 12 tablespoons of peanut butter or about oh a quarter gosh. jar of peanut butter. And yeah, yeah, it's only 130 calories a tablespoon for uh, almond butter or peanut butter, huh. you know, a large banana, some honey, cinnamon, dates, walnuts, and half a monster. And then oh another in a bag of energy, energy gels, energy chews. Mm hmm then go work out for like an hour and 40 minutes and come out of it starving or just like starving within about 15 minutes of finishing after, oh after finishing. Goodness. Wow. <laughs> Eat again. Uh, you know, on a big day, big days are Wednesday to Sunday where I've got a ergo workout, you know, a trainer, uh, ergo, uh, you know, an indoor, indoor rowing trainer, you know, I use a concept two. Uh, so I have a concept two workout for about 90 minutes a little bit shorter and then a light lift and then i'm done for the day you know so like massage or ice bath or something and then thursday to saturday i'm on the boat for up to seven and a half hours rowing and i stop at about the halfway mark about four hours in i uh, eat a lot and uh, then go back on the water about 90 minutes after i stop and have the other half of the monster and uh energy bar like a or we or we just make up at home like a healthy healthy uh oatmeal mm -hmm. oatmeal, oatmeal cookie essentially with some added protein powder in the mix and then bro for seven hours and i'm done wow that yeah. is something so seven hour day and that's th that's thursday to sunday or thursday to saturday okay that is so interesting it's like i don't know if i'll be able to roll maybe just a few strokes for me that's it i'll have to like take a while for me to get to your level too and um <laughs> And, and of course, uh, has anyone ever asked you about, uh, have, ever thought about maybe uh, getting involved in Olympics or anything like that? Or I talked to my coach, Ben Booth, who owns and designs uh, Next Boat Works out of about the, uh, the New Bedford, Massachusetts, south, 
Dartmouth uh, mass area. And he would say, no, you are uh, not going to be able to go to the Olympics. And I pretty much agree. Uh, so rowing across an ocean like the Atlantic and then re-gearing and refitting and crossing Greenland on skis wow. is something I'd rather do. Mm -hmm. uh, I did think about the Olympics, of course, right away, feeling that we're going to the Olympics for rowing is something that I would have really enjoyed. And I feel I would, of course, been competitive and probably came out nearly with a medal. And, you know, who wants, who wants to be fourth place? The, lone, the loneliest winner, the loneliest mm -hmm. finisher. Uh, right. And, and, of course, everybody complains about the silver and bronze as well, too. And I tell people, well, you got something at least. It's like, you know, too yeah. many people shoot for the gold, but they say, hey, you get the gold. That's great. But silver and bronze, you should be just as happy as that. And they say that, you know, the silver medals and the bronze medal are just as much as the gold medals these days. You're, you're winning or losing by fractions, or hundredths of a second in some of these events. And in coastal, you don't see people winning by half a second you can win by by 15 to 30 seconds in coastal racing uh sculling you'll you it, it's more how much longer you know you, you're within the span of your hand winning a coastal or winning a skull race crew race and you know there, there's there's any number of obstacles for each uh, coastal or out in the water out in the open water with waves and surf and chop and Sculling, it's that clean, like shooting a bullet. There's mm -hmm. not a whole lot that has the opportunity to really interfere with it. And there are protected waters. And I don't know what it looks like for sculling right now for these Olympic Games, but I have a feeling that it's a man-made lake that's probably six feet deep or 12 feet deep, and it's equal across the board. Hmm. And nobody wants the end lanes anyway, so. Right. And what are the chances of uh, the U.S. rowing team uh, getting a gold medal in the uh, rowing games? In, in, for the running right now? Uh, correct, yes. For, for what? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Running, running, I think we're very rowing, strong. Yeah, for rowing games, like, what are the chance of them? Uh... For rowing, I think we're very strong. I think rowing right now, they're very strong. They came out, and they weren't really very good early in the year. And then uh, I, I can say probably the most dramatic and controversial coach in the history of rowing, Mike Teddy, uh, started acting like himself. And it hasn't helped. And mm. he's threatening athletes. And oh yeah, the guys, uh, the, the guys are fiery. And uh, he can go from, you know, saying horrible things to saying, you know, I couldn't make it, you know, make it through a day without having, getting to see you guys and coach you. From articles I've read, and mm. uh, I, I wouldn't want to be a part of that. Right. I, it's like I don't, I don't need you. Mm -hmm. I'd be going to be this way. This, these games aren't about you. You're the coach. You know, the games are about the team, about the camaraderie, about the, the, the lack of borders amongst athletes and that we're all here for showing our very best and being our very best, inspiring people and maybe changing our communities in some way. Uh, this guy, this guy apparently thinks otherwise. It's all about him and how angry he is. Huh. So, it, it sounds not, like not a person I want to be around. It sounds like one of those throwback coaches in the day, like in any sport, like with Bobby Knight, Billy Martin, or say with, um, I'm trying to think, you know, the um, current one, like say um, John Tortorella in um, hockey, displaying tempers that um, really rub off on, on athletes and you just get them like, you know, motivated nowadays. It just like, just pushes them away. Yeah. I don't think it's ever been uh, motivational for coaches to scream negatively at athletes. Uh, it's not the military. In a military combat situation, you're in a much different mind space. Uh, it's similar, but I'd say in, a, in fair competition, in collegiate sport, in Olympic level, uh, or professional, you know, professional level, that you you need to go into things with positivity, mm -hmm. and, and I, you need to put. Right. And, and I think that's important as well, too. We'll talk about your um, your mindset, positivity and um, everything else, too, and uh, how you got started influencing people and more. But first, listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike Widener show dot com powered by Sonic Web Studios. 
Visit our line at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? SonicWeb Studios is the answer. SonicWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. SonicWeb Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Dia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Dia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Dia has garnered great reviews. And Eve Levin endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Me and Molson Dia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by a picture of this photo box where remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And when who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs? The holidays are coming, and what better time to give a gift for remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whether it's get the grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books. Bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show podcast on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you in a mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter and check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com and also on Amazon at the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, including great books by me and Molson Zia, go to amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Make sure you order today. And don't forget to donate to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com. Also on Anchor FM slash PayPal and also on Anchor FM as well, and PayPal too. So make sure you donate today. We're here with uh, the amazing uh, professional adventurer, endurance athlete, and keynote speaker, Andrew Gilman, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And, um, you, you know, we, you talked about your amazing adventures, like, you know, uphill ski challenge, you know, ice climbing, and more, and rolling as well, too. And um, what was that one moment that simply precisely influenced you into what you're doing today? I feel it precisely, or maybe influenced me. I don't know if there's a lot of precision behind what influences me. Uh, was definitely the fact that I want to challenge myself. I wanted to finish my triathlon career strong, take some time to figure out what else I wanted to do. And from there, I'm going to push myself. I'm going to push myself in new ways in what my passions are. And I said, you know, I, I've been missing skiing. I haven't been climbing ice. Uh, I love riding my bike. And I need some type of, I hate to use the word, but adventure. Mm-hmm. I need something that's going to challenge me where I'm not totally in control. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of variables that I can't control. In triathlon, if you don't want to keep racing, but you got to stop because you have a mechanical error, mechanical issue, that's fine. Somebody will pick you up. You're only, you're probably in front of someone's house anyway, and they've got a car more than likely. And, you know, you could always find the race director Mm -hmm. and you're done and it's safe. If you're climbing ice, you don't, and you have a problem, you need to fix it. You need to figure it out. You need to change your gear, change your tactics and uh, things change. You're not in control of water that's frozen that can start melting Mm -hmm. or is melting. Uh, And rowing is just another extension of all of that. Uh, where you're out in the ocean or a very big lake and you need to keep your head dialed in. You need to have your nutrition lined up. You need to have your communication systems online and operating correctly. You need to have your rescue systems that are satellite based uh, account, you know, those accounts active and and functioning. And you need to be self-reliant. And then your attitude is not just what's going to have you win, but it's going to be what keeps you alive. Hmm. You can't right. control the waves. That's really interesting. And uh, what's the one, two or three adventures that you uh, plan on taking on next besides the um, ro- so going uh, solo rolling around uh, Long Island? I'm looking at crossing the Atlantic. 
with a friend on a rowboat. Uh, and then from there, after crossing the Atlantic, uh, I like to ski across Greenland and try to do it relatively close together. But, you know, you have to go during the crossing season and we'll see what that looks like. Okay. And after that, look at uh, crossing the South Pole. Wow. Yeah, I mean, these are things that everybody everybody does. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, then, you, and then how about you? What are your thoughts of uh, climbing, trying to climb Mount Everest? I'm not interested in Everest. Really? Why? Because there's guys who had $80,000 who only climbed with a very light pack on Denali who are too old to be on Everest, probably too old to be on Denali. Uh, they're reliant on climbing Sherpa support. They're not fit. They're not experienced. They pose a risk to themselves. And the climbing community will take care of you. They will do their best to not just be a hero, but to take you home and to make sure you're safe and get you down. Wow. And you can't put people at risk like that at that altitude where you're dying it's very slowly, but you're surely dying of oxygen starvation. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot more to be had on Everest, but you know, the, the permits are very difficult for certain routes. And I think there's more interesting places to climb mm-hmm. uh, in, in the Kangaroo region and the Himalaya. Okay. And then what about uh, like other mountains and hills you plan on climbing? So uh, if you're not planning on climbing Mount Everest, what are, what are the uh, mountains or hills do you plan on climbing? Or what would There's you like a to peak, climb, I should say? The most difficult climb to get to. I like to do some ice climbing in Iceland. And there's a peak in Russia called Pobita. And that's nearly impossible to get to. The, 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 the expedition is really about getting there. And it's incredibly, incredibly cold. Uh, so that, that, that's an idea, but I think logistically it, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible. Okay. Uh, there are you know, just so many unclimbed peaks in the Himalaya and to climb up those and ski down. Uh, Alpamayo in South America is a phenomenal peak. I have a friend there right now climbing and so yeah, there's there's definitely adventure to be had. You know, I've climbed all the peaks for the most part that are 13,000 13, or 14,000 feet in Colorado in the winter, long enough ago that there weren't phones on my camera. Oh, and I don't wow. think I had a, oh yeah, it was like 2002, 2003 when I was climbing these. You know, it's almost 20 years ago. Oh um, my goodness. So somebody goes, well, why do you have any pictures of those? I go, because the cameras are about the size of a small backpack. And I didn't have the money for it. I was 20. And it's not something I thought about taking. It was like the last thing I would have probably thought about taking was a camera with me. Uh Uh, You know, in the winter, you just have so much gear that you're dragging with you anyway. And the possible need for a rope, not knowing what I was getting into. And some of the 13ers, you need a rope if you want to be smart. Uh, mm-hmm. on some of the descents without crampons so you know you you can go in any direction depending on the route we would take we were lucky we survived a lot of it very legitimately mm. it sounds like one of the more challenge, challenging ones you did you know going out to colorado as well too and um also uh, heading over to being a keynote speaker and um y- you know you've talked about some things and uh, what are some of the things you um often talk about where you go and um you know how do people contact you be a keynote speaker so what I typically talk about is the attitude that it takes to, to climb a mountain or to climb ice or to row uh, or be involved in endurance and in a situation that you're not in control of. Uh, uh, you know, your training, your confidence, your gear will keep you alive. But if your attitude is in the gutter, you, you, you know, it's like not having anything with you. You might as well just be in a paper, you know, a cardboard boat and, uh, you know, you know, and digging a hole through it, you're going to drown yourself. You're going to get hurt. And so I talk about the attitude and the will to endure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because you need a positive attitude and you need the will to endure 
no matter what's no matter what's going on and whether you're caring for yourself or caring for a loved one or you're racing a marathon or you're participating in your first 5k whether you're walking or running you need to keep yourself going and you need to have belief in yourself because we 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 are as capable as we believe we are we can also case capably get ourselves injured but we'll probably have a smile on our face right until that last moment where where you're now you know desperately hoping someone comes and picks you up mm -hmm. uh so you 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 can add it you can have a positive attitude all the time until you get injured and even then when you do get injured if you're in a situation and it is now become an adventure it's no longer smooth or dreamlike or calm and prepared for and it's chaos it's still up to you to have a positive attitude mm -hmm. and to maintain that all the way through including the recovery and the treatment because mm -hmm. you'll never get back to where you want it to be right and that's know? very and that's very true as well too and uh, we'll talk uh, more about your uh, your project and what's coming up as well too for uh, Andrew Gilman you listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike show.com powered by Soundweb Studios visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Widener show international warring author Mia Molson DF missing available on Amazon and paperback and ebook also brought to you by a picture of this photo books where remembering is the key ingredient call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picture of this book books.com we'll be back with um professional adventurer endurance athlete and keynote speaker andrew gilman after this time out. we're back with the amazing andrew gilman here on the mike wagner show and um and and he's got the new uh project he's going to be taking on in september so solo rowing around long island and uh how can people uh support your cause uh you can check out my uh, Instagram and my website. I believe the website is up. Uh, the Instagram handle is driven by endurance and driven, driven by, by endurance. endurance. Yes. Okay. Sir, driven by endurance. And you can find out driven by endurance.com and okay. the Instagram handle hashtag driven by endurance. Okay. And from there, you can see what I'm up to. We'll have a lot more rowing uh, related content due to my uh, photography team starting on the 17th of august wow okay. uh, and i'll tell you it's very hard to take a picture when you have an oar in each hand <laughs> yeah thank you and uh so please yeah so please do follow me and uh, if you want some selfies with me while rowing it'll look like uh the same distance between you and eating a sandwich at any time because if you lose an oar it's like a comedy act which is a very more like a drama of trying to get it back Oh my god. Uh, every time you're holding onto one oar and you lean over for the other one, the oar goes further from you. And I conveniently have long levers on my upper body. My mm -hmm. arms are very long, which which definitely help. But you don't want to lose the oar. And so all of my selfies, if I took a picture of while rowing, would be just like me eating a sandwich. You'd get a very good look at my uh at the pores of my skin or the <laughs> sunglass spray. Oh my god. So that's that's where that is. And yeah, I would love love everyone who's listening to follow me. And uh, it really makes it a lot easier to have sponsors if people are following hashtag driven by endurance. And I really don't like social media. I'd rather I'd rather meet with somebody uh, at a table, meet with somebody at a restaurant or meet people I speak with uh, in person because I'm a, I'm an in-person person, I believe in relationships and I cherish them. And uh, by following me, I'm able to develop more adventures and have more funding. And, you know, you interacting with me and asking me questions publicly is really what's going to help get me to that community to have an adventure or to come into that community and talk about what I'm doing. Okay. And it's, uh, yeah, you know, the attitude, the attitude of survive, the attitude to persevere. Mm -hmm. uh, my boat is called the perseverance the perseverance okay we'll, because, keep, that, we'll keep that in yeah. mind and uh, we'll get everybody to uh, support you on instagram and all the social media as well too and who to consider your biggest influence in your career andrew biggest influence in my career hmm. well my first instructor for climbing was brady robinson and Brady was my climbing counselor when I was at sleepaway camp. And now he's my neighbor. He was a pretty big deal in the climbing world. 
uh, where he's climbing peaks in Kazakhstan and uh, the Karakoram, Karakoram and uh, climbing of Conrad Anker and Jimmy Chen and those guys who are absolutely phenomenal, prolific climbers and adventurers. Uh, but I'd say my, my biggest influence is probably Amundsen and uh, my friend John Houston. Okay. And, uh, you know, the early pioneers and uh, impromptu adventurers. Uh, Shackleton didn't plan on his adventure. <laughs> and that was an adventure. It was unplanned. It wasn't dreamlike and it wasn't smooth. And uh, their morale and willingness to maintain order mm -hmm. and attitude. Mm -hmm. So and I think I think Shackleton and those you know adventures like Amundsen were absolutely uh, people who I look at and learn a lot from while reading the, uh, the epics of them. That's very amazing as well. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Go prepared. O open yourself to resources. Uh, when I realized that I'm much better off with a team, mm -hmm. that there are a lot of people who know much more than me that I have resources and that I could ask them for more. Uh, my good friend is Dana Gleason of Mystery Ranch Backpacks and they're also a sponsor of mine. And mm -hmm. I said, Dana, I need, a, I need like a adventure mentor for the Arctic and stuff or adventuring. And he goes, uh -huh. oh, I'll connect you a polar dude. Uh, John, it's like, who's polar dude? Oh, John Houston. But we, I just kind of call him polar dude. And so John's uh, you know, phenomenal. Uh, explorer and adventurer of the Arctic and has a great book out called Forward. And, you know, to be able to talk to John, it's like, how do you train? What do you eat? Uh, how do you deal with these logistics? Uh, how do you deal with the safety? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's phenomenal. And finding resources, finding those people who can say, yeah, you can join me. You can help me clean my gear, you know, okay. organize my 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 underwear for mountaineering mm -hmm. i mean just just get to them we we certainly do so and that's a fact too so once again we're with uh andrew gilman uh professional adventurer endurance athlete keynote speaker here on the mike widener show andrew a very big thank you for your time you've been absolutely fantastic looking forward to having you again soon do us a favor keep us up to date love you back in 2021 and beyond don't forget to keep in touch you've been terrific once again tell us about your upcoming projects or adventures what's your website how do people contact you and where can people um simply check you out or inquire about in being a keynote speaker so you can check me out on my website drivenbyendurance.com you can check Please do follow me on Driven by Endurance ha uh, hashtag uh, on Instagram. And then from there, you can find out about me as I'm circumnavigating Long Island solo on my coastal rowboat. And you can find that all out really uh, starting on the 17th of August. And, uh, you know, just the absolute amazing amount of endurance that's going to take 5,000 mm -hmm. calories a day at the minimum. And it's, you know, uh, for a keynote address, sponsorship inquiries. For any aspect that you want to be involved with, who I am or who I work with, such as numerous uh, local Long Island based nonprofits like Leukemia Lymphoma Society, you know, please reach out. Uh, I'd love to hear from anyone who's interested. We certainly do. So, once again, Andrew, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Definitely. Up to date. Love to have back in 2021 beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific, and we wish you all the best, Andrew. Thank you.